good day. Well, I'm going to be taking our elephant garlic out. We have scapes on it. So I'm going to be taking those out today. Yeah, I've let this bed go rather unusually for me because it is an onion bed. This is our jet set onions and they are not going to like any of these weeds crowding them out. I have left the romaine lettuce in because it's doing so amazingly well. Though these self-seeded carrots, if I come in close, these are from last year and you can see, I hope, they're already going to seed. So they will be coming out as well. Right, let's get on and weed this. that's about half an hour and it's been weeded. I'm leaving those lettuce in because we really are enjoying those and I think I'll be harvesting and using these onions earlier as well. Uncover those spring onions which is great but now I'm going to take out this one. That's escape. So I'm going to do exactly as I did with the other garlic. I'm just going to try and find. Gosh, oh, maybe I'll need a maybe I'll need a bigger fork. Yeah, well there there it is there. Put it in. Oh, I'm going to need a bigger fork. Just lifted it. There we are. Oh yeah, there's a little bowl bill. Can you see that? This one here. Which we'll keep for sowing next year. I'm going to take the rest of these out. That's our elephant garlic harvest. There's a bee here, quite interested by it. Not quite sure why. So some really decently sized bulbs. And let's just come over to this one. These are the little bulb lils, which can be replanted. But you know what I've been thinking whilst I've been harvesting these? Would I do them again? I think no is the answer. I'll stick to standard garlic, though of course there's a lot of garlic here. What I am going to do is process it though and freeze it. I'm not going to dry it like we're doing with our other garlic. And then just turning around. The plants that are left in here, the calendula and the fever few are, oh, there's still uh, elephant garlic in there. Um, I'm actually going to plant elsewhere and then this is going to be used for Autumn King Carrots. See you soon. Bye. Good day. These are our cheeky prints. There are four from Kelly and six from our own Save Seed and they are going to be going in today. They've got sort of pretty decent roots. Look at that again. Nice roots on there. And they are going to be going in. Our own save seed is going in there. And Kelly's is going in here. 
So my first job is harvesting and then removing those broad beans. The remainder of the broad beans have been harvested and now the stalks and everything else are going to be chopped up and added to our compost. This cheeky prince is positioned to go in now. I'm using this cordial bottle with the bottom cut off and a pipe going through it. You could use a bamboo as a watering device so that when this is planted, I can put water in at this end and it will get right down to the roots of this cheeky prince. What I should also have said is each of these are on a little mound like we did with our courgettes and I'm going to plant into that mound. Now that mound is good compost which has been dug about maybe 10 inches down into the soil or forked actually not dug. So they'll all sit on a little mound like that. These are our six save seed cheeky prints from our own seeds last year. And then coming over here are Kelly's save seed for the cheeky prints. So now I'm going to give them a really good shower with water. To water them in and then I'm also going to put water down each of the cordial bottles to make sure it's nice and damp at their roots. That was a good general dousing. And now that's been filled up too. So that water will go down, as you can see, and that's going down to the roots. That's also where I'll feed it through during the season. So I'm going to do that to the rest of them now, and then that will be job done. Bye. Good day. The planting out continues, this time with these rainbow chard, bright lights, they are, that's the variety, and they're going to be going into the narrow bed near our celeriac, in fact next to our celeriac. They're doing okay in these modules. I think I will be sowing some more to bring on where they will go. I really don't know. Let's go and lay these out. I've laid these all out in a sort of zigzag. So they go that way, that way, that way, that way, which gives you better spacing. Um, again, maybe these are about 10 inches to a foot apart. What's worth noting is I get these two You see the roots on the left have a pinkish tinge, while the ones on the white, on the white, the ones on the right are white. So the ones on the left are going to give us red stems. Right, I'm going to do exactly the same as I did the other day with the celeriac, which are there. Dig a hole, put them in and then give them a really good water. They've all been watered in now and be quite happy. Fingers crossed anyway. Okay, see you soon. Bye. Good day. It's a bit of a bits and bobs day today. There's a few more squash to plant out, so I'm going to be doing that. They're going to be going into, by the celeriac and the um, 
chard, which I'm looking at over there. Um, yeah, bits and bobs. There's a branch that I want to cut down. There's some deadheading that I need to do on roses. There's quite a lot of things to do. But one thing that I just thought I'd show you that is really another challenge for us this year is the black fly. Um, and also green fly and white fly. There seems to be a lot about. Not quite sure why. Obviously, we've had a very mild winter. So a lot of the pests will have sort of survived that. But the black fly is really having a go at our climbing beans and they're not liking it. So this is one of our runner beans and there's black fly. I won't zoom in because it's difficult for you to see, but black fly all over the growing tip here. These are flowers coming. This is black fly and it's making all the leaves curl. You can see that I think the leaves are curling and it's sort of stunting the growth because of course the black fly is sapping goodness out of the plant. Um, they're being milked by ants as well. Can I get an ant? There, you can see an ant there. They're being milked by these ants. But what's happening is they're sort of not climbing properly. They're, they're sort of going up and then folding over and I'm having to try and force them to do what I want them to do. I think once they get beyond a certain level, they, they seem to be okay, but the lower ones are struggling. Oddly enough, at the moment, it's just on our runner beans and our gigantes. I think I'm going to get some neem oil and do a neem oil spray on them. Yeah, but there's other things to get on with. So, because actually I can't get to the neem oil at the moment because it's at the back of the shed. So there's other things I need to do. So I'm going to get on with those, including weeding this bed. Okay, that's it for today. See you soon. Bye. Look at this mullein moth. It's on our mullein, our verbascum. Normally I would take them off, but this verbascum is about to flower, so I'm just going to let this one, this caterpillar, grow on into what will be a moth. I think a nocturnal moth, I think. It's munching away quite happily. Let's have a look at the flower. This is the verbascum flower. Absolutely lovely. And that's the whole of the verbascum there. Lovely. Good day. I've been doing some weeding. It's all bindweed, cooch grass, and also uh, sank foil, which we have quite a lot of. But the way I'm going to get rid of this is by putting it into a big bin with water and drowning it. And then the nutrients of this will leach into the water and we'll be able to use that as a fertilizer, which is great. This is the bin that we have, which we were given. weeds and water and this lot is going in and then I'm going to add some more water to that and just let it be and that will drown those weeds and kill those weeds as I say the nutrients will leach into the water and we can use that as a tonic as a fertilizer Okay, bye. Good day. Not quite at the allotment. Rather at one of the ponds next to a lock at the 
local canal. Look at all that flower. Look at this valerian down here. Gorgeous. I love this flower. Absolutely love it. Such a beautiful quiet space and only a few minutes walk from our allotment. Look at that willow. Gorgeous. There's a big field on the other side of that. And this is where the water comes through from the from the lock. Which is just here. Yeah, that's so the river river the water runs down here down that way there's Richard and then just beyond this bit here the river Brent joins it and that's where our allotments are bye good day I'm about to sow our carrots autumn king carrots but thought I'd have a look at these parsnips these three rows of parsnips are our own save seed of Guernsey Half Long. These three rows are fresh seed that we bought of Guernsey Half Long. I think you can see the difference in germination. Obviously we have no idea whether those ones that we saved are actually going to produce or not. I've been doing a bit of weeding which is why there's some ground on some of the leaves and then if we just come up to this area you can most probably make out those four markers on the other side there this is where we sowed our white spear fresh seed parsnips not a single germination very odd and this row is where we sowed the root root parsley i was going to say root parsnip root parsley and there's only can you see that a little two three that have germinated so we have all of this area to put our autumn king carrots into which i'm going to sow now when i upload this to youtube i'll put a link in to how we sow our parsnips and carrots but effectively i'm just going to put a drill in across so thinly and then cover it up cover them up rather that's drills made and sewn i've left a little gap over here for where those two parsley roots are whether they'll survive or not I don't know but now I'm just covering the seed over and now I'm just going to tap down to make sure the seeds in contact with the soil and then everything's going to have a good water and then that will be job done so I'm going to sort these out now and see you again soon. Bye.